it's a really exciting time for Domino's because our unit economics are really strong, which means our franchisees are enjoying uh, great success in their profits. And as a result of that, we're going to deliver significant store growth throughout our business over the coming years. Domino's Pizza Enterprises is the Australian owned master franchise holder for Domino's in Australia, New Zealand, Belgium, France, the Netherlands, Japan, Germany, Luxembourg and Denmark. The company was established in 1983 and has a network of over 2,600 stores. Joining me to discuss the company's recent half year results and future growth plans is CEO and Managing Director, Don Mage. Don, welcome to TCN TV. My pleasure to be here. Now, Domino's rallied by around 7% yesterday after the release of your first half results, which were headed by strong 30% gains in underlying profits and dividends. Can you outline what drove this very good bottom line result? Yeah, I think um, what you're seeing is the results of what we've been investing for the last couple of years leading into COVID. You know, we already had a very strong digital platform that served us really well. Um, we decided three years ago that we would go all in dominoes. There was a moment when we were literally looking at other concepts, um, but we said, look, you know, when, you, when you really dig into our numbers, we can just sell so much more pizza. Why are we getting distracted with these other concepts? Um, so the, the real focus on, on pizza and execution against that with our Project 310, which is our delivery times, and then the hard work of building up the store count growth for Japan, Germany, and France. And they, you know, we service 340 million people today in the nine countries, which is those nine countries have a bigger GDP than China. And in the last decade, the Benelux and Australia, New Zealand grew most of the profit, but right now the other 280 million which is you know japan germany and uh, france they're really they're really lighting it up and and japan by without a doubt was the star in this result domino's also reported a pleasing start to the second half of the current financial year with sales in the first six weeks of the half up around 21 percent on uh, the same period last year given this how are you expecting to end the full year compared to the year prior yeah when you look at the underlying earnings, we do expect that we're going to have a strong period. But we did want to highlight the shareholders. We we are getting a um, some FX headwind with the yen, and that's material. Um, ultimately, that's a headwind today, and it could be a tailwind tomorrow when you're looking at currencies. You know, it, Japan's going to perform well. Um, Japan will have to roll a, a some incredible months in the very first phase of COVID last year. There were some abnormally high sales in um, April, May. So that is a little bit of a speed bump. Um, we're going to have a lot more stores open. Uh, we're going to have a lot more media. So we still think we're going to trade well during that period, but it would take away some of the icing on the cake. Um, and then on a like-for-like -like basis, last year, we didn't most of the executives of our company during COVID did not take a, an incentive. Well, with these results, we'll most likely earn an incentive this year, and that's another cost on a like-for-like -like basis to the business. So, um, yeah, those, those are some headwinds with still strong growth. We will open a, a record number of stores in this half, so more stores in the first half, and that was a record. So we're expecting a, a pretty strong year with store growth. Now, John Domino says online sales jumped in part because of COVID-19, which has, um, of course clients, customers staying at home more. Um, what will happen to your sales mix when the pandemic eventually fades from you and office workers stop working from home and ordering pizza? Yeah, so when we look at the, the history, the biggest driver of our business was what we call the age of delivery. Delivery was already the boom, online was a boom. And you can see all our online numbers, they were quite significant already coming into COVID. We then got a bump with new customers that uh, that hadn't come to us about uh, of the the customers that were coming in for, for delivery the new customers something like 80 to 90 percent depending on which country were actually genuinely new so they weren't carrier customers coming to delivery now what did happen is while we had this beautiful delivery boom with new customers we lost a lot of our carrier customers and so in a post-covid environment we think there'll be some of these customers that will still stick because they've now got familiarity they've had high frequency with us during this covid window um, particularly europe and, and japan um, but then we do see some of our carrier business returning post-covid so maybe a, you know some of the delivery coming off but carry out returning and we're therefore still uh, giving a, a three to uh, a five-year outlook of three to six percent same store sales. Domino's has gradually expanded and differentiated its pizza menu over time while it's also uh, dabbled in some chicken offerings. What other menu items could realistically be considered without hefty capital costs? Yeah that's that's the big core it's still mostly pizza 
um, we've, we've had chicken in and, in and around our menus now for a couple of decades because it, it is a good protein to add to what ultimately has a higher carbohydrate meal, you know, with all of the bread offerings and so on. So chicken's been the friend to the, to the table, and, and, uh, but we've increased that in Europe. Um, with this new crunchy chicken product. So, you know, it's comfort food at this period of time where you've got a box of pizza and a bucket of, of uh, chicken tenders, crun as the crunchy chicken tenders. And, um, and so that's going to expand um, throughout Europe. Uh, it's currently just in the Benelux. But by and large, it's doing more pizza. It's really, there's, there's so many exciting things. If we got one thing wrong in the last quarter, believe it or not, as good as things were, we thought we'd be in a deeper recession around the world. And we were actually geared our menus to be even more affordable. In hindsight, that was the wrong thing. We should have actually been launching premium products. And that's what will be coming in this next three to four months is more premium pizzas. Because while people are enjoying delivery, they, and they're maybe not going to restaurants, they still want to still treat themselves. So expect from Domino's some more premium pizzas in our menu, but it will be pizza. Now, the company has over time expanded from its Australasian roots and now has a material presence in Japan and some other European countries. Can you outline what's underpinning sales growth in these overseas countries and what other countries are now on your radar? Yeah, so we never really talk about the future countries because it just creates tension in those regions when, uh, you know, sometimes the media can talk about it when maybe people don't even know that they're selling their businesses. So we, we do keep those cards close to our chest. Um, the, the, the interesting thing here, though, is that, that what investors are understanding about our business is that, you know, when we first bought Japan and we first bought Germany, they're such large uh, markets, but they did have some structural challenges. In other words, the Japanese don't eat a lot of pizza and we've had to educate the Japanese to eat a lot more pizza. And, and whilst we didn't really have the exact roadmap when we bought the business, we thought, well, the Japanese population didn't eat a lot of hamburgers 50 years ago either, or fried chicken and so on. So, you know, those Western foods were educated into the market and we thought we could find a place for pizza as pizza typically around the world is, is either number one or number two is the takeaway food of the country in, in most of, of Western cultures. So we're doing that now. We're feeling really, really good about that. Um, and then in Germany, a very fragmented mum and pop market so a lot of independent single unit owners and so on and so the question was well are the german uh, is the german population going to embrace a big chain and what well, we're seeing that we're proving that now too i mean they're the two rocket ships in this business and you know 210 million population between those two countries so a little old australian business like ourselves um, this is an incredibly exciting opportunity add france to that as well um yeah we're We've done a lot of work to get here and now we've got to continue to deliver on it. And finally, Domino's is continuing to expand its Australian store network uh, through organic growth and acquisitions. How does the company manage concerns of existing franchisees that new stores reduce their existing client catchment areas? Yeah, so a franchisee owns their own map. So when you buy a Domino's franchise, you own a territory and you own that territory. We can't put a store in that territory without either you selling part of that territory um, or you opening the store or even maybe selling the original store. So, you know, we do incentivize that process um, and, you know, franchisees often get to such high volumes, they're struggling to handle the volume in that, that area. Um, but ultimately, if you still don't want to open that store, you, you, we can't make you open that store. You own a territory. We're not like burgers and sandwiches where you really own a, a street location and so on. Domino's, the real goodwill of a franchise is in the, the map. That, that comes with that franchise agreement. So, um, so yeah, we, you know, we'll continue to incentivize and uh, piece by piece, we'll continue to get these stores open. Fantastic. Well, thank you for your insights today and all the best for your growth ahead. My pleasure. It's great for having a chat. And thank you for watching. Now, if you like what you see, please be sure to like and share the video, subscribe to TCN TV and drop us a comment. Tell us who you would like to see next and what you would like me to ask them. Or if you're an investor, send us an email so we can keep you in the loop with the latest ideas to empower.